Hey guys, it's Clint Paschal with The Bible Together, and we are on Zechariah chapter 10. This is a real clear instruction by God through the prophet of how God will take care of Judah, uh, and Jesus shows up again. Uh, so let's go through this. This is another one of those chapters that's really beautiful, uh, pretty easy to read, uh, clear imagery, and um, some pretty sharp words. Uh, we are reminded again in verse 2 in chapter 10 that we are just like sheep. And one of the best things that sheep do is wander. Um, we do a lot of damage when we wander, and we are oppressed for lack of a shepherd in verse 2. God gets real in verse 3 about how mad he is about the other shepherds. And i got to be honest, as a preacher, um, as a church leader, as a shepherd myself, this hits home because God takes shepherding so personally. Uh, he says, My anger burns against the shepherd, and I will punish the leaders, for the Almighty will care for his flock, um, the people of Judah, and will make them like a proud horse in battle. It's so awesome. So why was God mad at these shepherds? Well, these shepherds uh, of the people of God were known for allowing in idolatry. If you know anything about the Jewish people and their journey, uh, it is one of idolatry, and more and more of these leaders would allow these idols to be worshipped, and God takes his sheep very personally. He does not want these shepherds to get away with it, and he says, I'm going to punish them. Uh, in verse 4, we find Jesus. Verse 4, from Judah will come, remember Jesus Christ came from the tribe of Judah, from Judah will come the cornerstone, from him the tent peg, from him the battle bow. Three things, cornerstone, tent peg, battle bow. Cornerstone, that capstone that's placed on a, on a, a building, sometimes placed on the very top, um, sometimes placed in the corner. Uh, the capstone is the pinnacle of the building, or it is also the thing that holds the building together and keeps the lines true. This is who Jesus is. He is the tent peg, which was uh, imagery of huge tents that they would pitch, and the single tent peg uh, usually in the middle was the thing that held everything together. And the battle bow is the bow, you know, on which the string is uh, attached, and that bow is the thing that holds that power and then he says, and that's Jesus, and then he says, from him every ruler together will be like warriors in battle. So it is the unity that Jesus brings that causes all of us to be used in, in concert together to produce victory. Um, so we now look down at uh, how God's going to do something pretty dramatic in verse 6. He says, I will strengthen Judah and save the tribes of Joseph. Well, this is a clear description of all of God's people, all of the tribes coming together. It's not just a restoration of what we are understanding that is specifically to Judah, um, because that was the specific sort of uh, exile that we saw through Babylon. But this is, this is uh, all the tribes together. Scholars look at this and they say, this looks like God's restoration is going beyond just this story, but it is larger than that. Um, we're going to go down to verse 10. And here he says two cool things. He says, I'm going to bring back my people from Egypt and from Assyria. These are these two places that had put God's people into slavery and exiled them. And then in the, in the last part of verse 10, he says, I will bring them to Gilead and Lebanon. Gilead being like the eastern border of the Holy Land. It's the, the full Holy Land and Lebanon being in north. And the point there is, I'm bringing, I'm bringing my people back. They feel like that they've been, well, they've, they've never been abandoned by me, God says, but they feel like they've been abandoned. I'm bringing you back. I'm bringing you back. And let me read verse 11 and 12 over you just as a blessing. Just listen to these words. Let these words marinate on your heart. God's people, they will pass through the sea of trouble. The surging sea will be subdued. All the depths of the Nile will dry up. Assyria's pride will be brought down and Egypt's scepter will pass away. I will strengthen them in the Lord, and in his name they will live securely, declares the Lord. That's God promised over you. Embrace it. I'm going to read the last verse again. I will strengthen them in the Lord, and in his name they will live securely. May you, in God's name, live in security today. God bless you. Thanks so much for doing the Bible together.